Your phone is meticulously designed by billion dollar company to capture and monetize your attention. It is so successful that in 2024, it's estimated that people spend 28% of their waking hours on their phone endlessly scrolling. But what if there's a special method to turn your phone back into the tool for hyper productivity? And no, you won't have to switch to a dumb phone or uninstall all your favorite apps. What I'm about to show you in this video is an ultimate measure management consultants are using to drastically reduce screen time and get a lot more done. So let's get to it. The first thing we need to talk about is why do you need a method or system to combat this issue? Because so many are wise on treating phone addictions, from digital detox rituals to extreme measures like using a dumb phone. But here is the catch. Almost none of these tips are going to work for you. It's a little bit like trying on someone else's glasses. It's just gonna be a blurry mess. What you need is not a one size fits all solution. For example, you might hear this advice a lot. Lock in your phone in a sealed tight lunchbox and put a timer on it. I mean, theoretically, they all work to some extent, but if you're an investment banker or a management consultant like myself, pulling those advice not only reduce screen time, but most likely it's gonna get me fired really quickly. And that's why you need your own system. So in this video, my aim isn't just to show you how to tweak your phone settings. Although, of course, I will share you my own setup as an example. Instead, I think what will help you the most is to do a simple three-step exercise to come up with your own personalized system that fits your own needs. I've spoken to plenty of colleagues about this topic, and I'm quite sure that this is the most effective method. It's just so much better than the general tips floating on the internet. So with that said, let's get to the part number one. Step one, audit your typical day. This is me using my great PowerPoint skills to showcase how most of us use our phone. Throughout the day, we do all different tasks like workout, go on business trips, socializing, and binge watching YouTube. But for the most of us, Every single time we pick our phone, we are faced with the exact same messy clustered home screen. And that is not really ideal, isn't it? I think that most of us would agree, in order for your phone to truly work for you in a productive way, it needs to be simple, clean, and purposeful. Something like this. When you go work out, you reach for your phone and you see one page and nothing else. You sit down at your office chair and look at your phone, another different page and nothing else just super clean. You see a productive phone is supposed to be a reflection of your daily habits. Every single time you look at your phone, it should have a specific and simple interface waiting for you. That's why before we jump into the setting menu of your phone and tweak things around, you actually have to take a very good look at your life. Have a good understanding how you want your ideal day to unfold. What are the most helpful apps that you use at what time? What are the bad ones you should delete and hide away? And it can be a very simple exercise, basically can be accomplished with a pen and a paper. Here's how it works. First, uh, divide your typical day into several blocks, each lasting about one to three hours. Take myself as an example, it looks something like this. From 7.30 to 8.30, I'll get ready for the day. That includes everything I do before I arrive at the office, like workout, breakfast, reading news, and checking for early emails. From 8.30 to 9.30, I'll either drive to school to drop off my kids or drive to work. 9.30 to 12 o'clock, this is my working time. Typically, it's my most productive period of the day uh, where most important meetings happen and where I get the most things done. I'll do some intensive work early on and probably some lighter work like scheduling and replying to email towards a 12 o'clock mark. Between 12 o'clock to 1.30, this is typically lunch break uh, when I usually network a little bit and talk to interesting colleagues and friends. Between 1.30 to 4 p.m., I do intensive work again, but occasionally I'm on the road to client meeting from 4 o'clock to 6 p.m. This is when I do some light work again. If I have time, I'll catch up on some uh, learning or work-related trainings. From 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., I really try not to do anything at all and reserve it for family and friends. It doesn't always happen, but we're talking about ideal day, right? So I'm gonna aim for a three-hour break here. Between 9 o'clock to 12 p.m., this is when I consume a lot of content, learning uh, new languages, doing my hobbies, reading books, and creating YouTube videos. This is when my kids has already gone to bed and I want to have a little bit of me time. In case you didn't see it, uh, this eight time block of mine, they basically have seven different modes I'm operating on every single day. Yours might be very different or very similar, but that's why this audit is so important and very underrated. If you don't have a very clear idea on uh, what are you going to do at any given time of the day, you can possibly set up your phone in a productive and specific way, which is you want your phone to only display the right amount of information to you at the right mode. Streamlining how you interact with your phone at different times so that instead of a clustering phone screen filled with apps, you can always have a minimalistic setup that reflects your life mode whenever it's triggered. And next, I want you to take a good look at this pattern when you interact with your phone. For each pattern, I want you to give it a name. 
Me as an example, the lunch break and family time look very similar, so I'll just name it socializing. Morning and afternoon work are very similar, so it just becomes work. Gym session, I call it fitness. Driving and taking a taxi is basically the same mode, which I will call it road. I learn new languages, and a lot of times I watch tutorial videos, so I will call it consumption. And well, YouTube is YouTube. Now that you have the patterns and their corresponding name, with that, we can now move on to step number two which is all about designing a separate home screen or aka focus mode for each and every one of your behavior patterns so that your phone is both customized and simplified at any given time. Now this is a very good concept coming from the best-selling book, Atomic Habit. I'm sure by now you've heard about this. If you haven't, one of the most fundamental concept is environment shapes human behavior. Certain behavior arise again and again under the same environmental conditions. We choose to do something not because of who we are, but because of where we are. Chances are you have heard about this concept, but I'll bet money on it that you haven't implemented this much, especially when it comes to managing your phone. Because nowadays, your phone is much as a part of your environment as your bedroom or office. How it's set up can significantly shape your behavior throughout the day. Many years ago, before my consulting career, I used to group my apps based on functionality. So social media has a folder, email, and another folder. Well, I thought it was very nice and clean. Until one day, I realized that every time I unlock my phone, my finger just has this muscle memory of hovering over the Instagram icon. This is when I finally realized that this habit has to go away. I need to clean up my digital environment. First thing I did is I had every single app from my home screen. Yes, every single app. It's a lot like moving to a new home and you feel the urge to redecorating and cleaning up everything. And nine times out of 10, you end up with a nicer and more comfortable environment. To hide any app, just long press on the app icon and instead of deleting it for good, you can actually select hide from home screen. This way, the app is not actually deleted. You can still search for it or see it in the app library. And the next thing you want to do is to create a lot of empty pages as your new home screen. How many? I would suggest n plus two. N being the number of live pattern you have previously created. For me, I have seven patterns, so I will create nine empty pages. For each pattern of your life, I want you to find the most productive, most useful app and fill one page using both rigid and individual icons. In case you don't know how this is done on an iPhone, you basically just long press the empty space and then search for the most used apps. You scroll through the type of widget that you want to use and drag the widget onto your home screen. For example, when I'm on the road, I'll typically open up either my Tesla app or Uber, depends on whether I'm driving or having a taxi. I have music or audible when I listen to stop on the road and Google map or Baidu map depends on where I'm traveling to. Remember, you can stack widget like this. Any of the app with similar functionality can be switched back and forth. This is useful because you're associating a screen realistic with functionality. So I find it very useful. Another example, during my YouTube shooting, my home screen looked like this. It got linked to the video home base, which is a Notion template. Uh, it has everything of my ongoing production of videos and video ideas, brainstorming, code bank, etc. To studio in case I want to reply some comments. Oh, right. Don't forget to leave a comment down below. VidIQ for uh, video analytics, Gmail for answering questions. Occasionally people send me emails and many other utility apps such as controller to my studio light and monitoring app in case I want to use my phone as a secondary monitor. And I also turn off notification for everything uh, when I'm recording. So as you can see, when I switch to this mode, my phone really becomes like the central control of this studio. And after that, I'll set up different home screen for every one of them. Now you have all the individual pages, they need to turn the pages into a focus mode. So anytime you switch on the focus mode, your phone becomes a super simplified version at any given time. So here's a quick tutorial of making a focus mode. You just swipe down and long press focus, click a new focus mode and under the home screen, you want to uncheck everything else and just leave the one page you wanted. Uh, but you may be wondering, uh, what about the banking apps or many other utility apps that you don't use on any particular time of the day? But those are also very important to you whenever you want to pay the bill or shop on Amazon. Now that's where the plus two empty pages comes from. One of the page, I'll design a central toggle shortcut widget to link all your focus mode together and the other one to fit all your important but non-time sensitive apps. This is what I call a default mode. And the purpose of the default mode on your phone is to serve as a parking spot for apps that don't fit into any specific focus mode. 
This mode is ideal for times when you are not in a hurry or just want to relax or handle tasks that aren't time sensitive. It's a designated space for leisurely browsing or less urgent activities, allowing you to engage with these apps without disrupting your focus. You may feel like a hey, one page is not enough. Well, that's exactly the point. If you can manage to do a minimal home, you can do with just one extra page of apps. Remember, you haven't really deleted anything yet. If you ever feel like there's another app that you need to bring into the default home screen, feel free to do so. Just remember, you need to bump another one off the page. For the apps that aren't included in either your focus or default modes, you will need to decide their fate based on their utility in your life. If this app aren't essential for productivity nor have frequent and useful functions, chances are they're primarily for entertainment or apps you might have downloaded once and forgotten. And for these apps, I then open up the app library and I delete as many as I can. Most of these apps you won't be using very often, and so deleting them keep your phone minimal. Or if there's something that you use too often, maybe consider deleting it too. And in my experience, this alone actually reduced my screen time by more than 50%. Uh, my simple philosophy, if you don't see it, you don't click it. Now moving on, let's talk about step number three, how we use habit stacking and focus mode to enable us to jump from one page to another page with one click of a button. Now habit stacking is another concept popularized by Atomic Habit. And the concept goes like this, human habit stacks, each action become a cue that triggers the next behavior. By linking positive habits to established ones, you build powerful habit chains that drastically improve your life. So basically when you do action A and out of habit, you carry on to perform action B. With enough repetition, your life is sort of become a virtuous cycle that runs on autoplay. When it comes to our phone, I realized the same principle can apply, just not on an atomic level. You see, what I realized over the years is that you can basically chain focus mode based on your daily agenda. For example, once I'm done workout, I automatically want to go on the road mode since I'm about to leave for work. When I got on my car, I automatically want to go into work mode at each home screen of each focus mode you want to add a little shortcut pointing towards the next focus mode. So when you finish one thing, you can carry on and do the next. And that's not all. If you want maximum flexibility, you also want to set up this little shortcut, which allows you to go back to the default mode anytime you want. This way, technically, you have access to every single useful app on your phone, but you can still be very focused when you need to be. For example, if you're committed to using focus mode for the entire day, you can absolutely chain this focus mode together with a click of a button. It goes from one focus mode directly to the next and the next. And it help you build habits so easily. And if anytime you want to take a pause from this focus mode chain, just click this down and you'll be redirect back to the default mode. And when you're ready to jump back in, you can just use a central shortcut widget to get back in. And to set it up, this is how it's done. You need a central shortcut widget to connect everything. So that's why in your default mode, you want to enable two pages. We already talked about the default mode. Now we're gonna talk about the central hub. You can think of this as a central control of every focus mode that you created. A quick tutorial on how to set this up. First of all, you need to open an app called Shortcut. This is an Apple native application, so you don't have to pay anything. Basically, what you wanna do is click open the app, and click this plus sign to add a new shortcut. And give this shortcut the exact same name as your focus mode. You want to pick a nice color and icon. I already have one called work, so to demonstrate, I'll just create a new one called something else. And what this is doing is basically pre-program your iPhone with a series of steps as instruction and turn those steps into a simple button. So every time you click the button, it's like you just made a bunch of command to your iPhone. So next, we want to click add action here, and then you want to search for focus. Then you want to scroll down and then find the set focus option and click it. Once you did that, you're gonna see this page. Turn do not disturb off. Do not disturb is basically the default focus mode, which we do not want. What you need to do instead is to click it. It's gonna show you a list of focus mode option that you have already created. Select the one that this shortcut is supposed to be linked to and change off to on. And the next phrase by default is gonna be until turn off. Uh, this is what we want and you want to leave it as is. Apple really tried to make this as friendly as possible. It feels a little bit like the training tool they use for beginner programming class, but I can see it look confusing as hell to some people. So just follow it along if you're feeling a little bit confused. It will all make sense a little bit later. Rewind the video for 20 seconds if you have to, because next you want to repeat this step for every one of your focus mode. And every single shortcut is basically the same, except for one, which is this down button, which allows you to go back to default mode. 
You want to again click the plus sign to add a shortcut, then search for focus. But instead of click set focus, you want to click the get current focus. Then add an if condition, click if current focus has any value, and if that condition is satisfied, meaning that you're actually currently in a focus mode, then come to the bottom and search for focus again. This time, click set focus, and in the parameter session, select turn current focus off. Then you're done. Great, now we have the shortcut. We want to display all of this shortcut simultaneously on a screen as a widget. And here is how to do that. So what you want to do is to go to the first page of your default mode and add a widget as normal, search for the app shortcut, find the eight boxes tile, click add. Make sure you edit the widget so it shows a appropriate set in case you have other shortcuts enabled. And lastly, to chain all the focus mode together, you want to create a series of shortcut icons linking all the focus mode together. To make shortcut into an icon, you can go to the shortcut app, click the three dots, then share, then click save to home screen. And then you can find the icon in the home screen of your current focus mode. How do you want to link everything together is completely your decision. But I would suggest you to follow your typical day, just like what we talk about in step number one. For example, driving mode come after the workout mode for me. So there will be a driving little icon on the workout focus mode. Now, if you set up everything properly, your phone should look like this. I still remember the first week I tested this system out using my phone. It literally feel like my life has so much more structure and I certainly hope it helped you too. And to get the most out of this habit stacking method, I will give you some additional tips and guiding principle to make your own system more effective. Tip number one, if you find the focus mode to be too limiting, don't force yourself to lock into a simple mode. This is because the more rigid the system is, the more resentful you will feel towards it. And in turn, the less likely you're gonna use it in the long run. There are so many times that I remember I have to uh, leave a gym session because there's some emergency at work, and that's okay. Scrap your plan for the day and focus on the short-term tasks. Our life is constantly moving forward and backwards. You need your phone to be very flexible as well to accommodate any potential changes. Getting things done, in my opinion, is actually more important, but do make sure you switch back into the focus mode when you're ready to continue. In my experience, you'll find yourself switching back and forth quite frequently at the beginning when you first try out the system. That's not necessarily an indication of you don't have strong willpower. Maybe it's just because you haven't perfected each mode yet. And some functions are just missing from the focus mode you're currently in. So consider tweaking the focus mode a little bit further to suit your needs. And tip number two, I advise you to stay away from auto-triggering of the focus mode. I know the iPhone has a system to auto-trigger certain focus mode it depends on where you are or what time of the day. I find automatic triggering of a focus mode to be a bad thing for creating habit because you're basically outsourcing our decision making to a robot. Your phone is not supposed to be the decision maker in your life. Rather, it needs to help you process information, accomplishing tasks whenever you allow it to. Switching to a focus mode and stay focused for an extensive amount of time is a conscious decision on your part and you need to be the person holding the trigger. And the last thing you want to be mindful is each time you toggle a focus mode, you not only trigger a list of app on your home screen, you also trigger a new mindset putting the mental commitment into doing something. Now that wraps up everything I want to share for this three-step system. I'll be the first to admit, although this system works wonderfully for me and a lot of colleagues over the past year, it's probably not the most intuitive method to build habits. It takes a lot of setup and soul searching to come up with a carefully planned digital space. Now, if simple and minimalism is your thing, here's a system used by a management consultant to get things done, even without a digital phone. If that topic interests you, click right here where I show you my analog system to accomplish anything.